Hey, um, I was talking to some friends today and they were talking about the channel and most of the feedback's very good. Um, but there was um, a request to do a really, you know, go back to basics on these cryptic crosswords um, uh, because I think that both Mark and I, we get a bit lazy um, and we tend to, you know, assume that people have watched the earlier videos and that just might not be true. So I'm going to do the, the quick cryptic crossword that appeared yesterday. Um, in the Times um, and I'm going to do it very slowly and talk about uh, the very basic principles of how you solve cryptic crossword. Um, I'm going to start off by uh, reiterating some advice that you will see in our earlier videos which is that every single clue or almost every single clue that you see in a cryptic crossword um, has a definition which will almost always be at the beginning of a clue or at the end of the clue and then it has a whole load of other words that are basically a code their word play is what we call it and the, you know the code um, explains how to create uh, or concoct the answer and it might be you know it might hint at an anagram um, or it might hint at a, a hidden and I'll talk about what those are during the course of this puzzle um, but one way to view a cryptic crossword is as a quick crossword with a lot of extra information. And if you can eliminate all of that extra information, um, you know, you can effectively treat every cryptic crossword as a quick crossword. Um, so what I'm, what I'm going to do now is as we go through this, I'm going to tell you what I think the, the quick crossword is, um, quick crossword definition is, um, at, the, at the start of a clue. Um, and, and that might help to, um, uh, you know, show you that, that it's just a matter of learning how to read these clues properly. If, if you can read the clue properly, um, it's actually very easy to solve these puzzles if you have you know some uh, basic crossword skills if you're able to, to think of some synonyms. Let's start with this one just because one across is a whole load of information in there and that's going to be more complicated. Recording device cheers prior at outset with a very uh, uh, odd spelling there of prior. Um, now I think prior is in somebody who pries, uh, somebody who's nosy. Now the quick, uh, sorry, the definition here is recording device. So you need to come up with a three letter word that's a recording device. The rest of the clue, as I said before, is just um, is a series of hints about how to create the letters of the answer. Uh, let's look at those. You've got cheers. Well, there is uh, a common uh, two letter word that can mean the same as cheers. Um, cheers as in thank you. And then prior at outset. Well, we'll see this over and over again as we go through this puzzle. There'll be references to the starts of words or the ends of words or the middle letter of words. And that's very simple. So prior at outset is simply saying, look at the first letter of the word prior. So if you can think of a two-letter word that means the same as thank you, put it in there and you'll find you'll create a recording device. So pause if you need to, but the answer's I think fairly clear, it's tar. And so the, the recording device is a tap, um, which is something that spies might use to, to record converse, conversations. I'm not gonna be shy in this puzzle about using using the first word. So let's have a look at this one. And immediately we can see from the first two words in this clue, after time. Okay. Now, one thing that is very common with all cryptic crosswords is that they will liberally use abbreviations. Um, these abbreviations all have to be supported by the dictionary. And the dictionary that is most used is this one, which is, um, if you can see it on my webcam there, no, I need to move it that way. Chambers Dictionary. Um, now, if you go to any any letter, 
Let's go to T as an example, just to um, because it appears in in this this puzzle. T under the letter T, it lists a whole load of things that T stands for. Now, I'll give you some examples: tenor, Thailand, surface tension, Tesla, tritium, and it's a shortened form of it as well. So what you tend to see in crosswords is that the setters will use these abbreviations um, in their clues. And one of the abbreviations that, that uh, is valid for, for the letter T is time. So what the set has done here, so what we're looking for is the name of a river. I said that the definition, the quick definition is either at the beginning or the end. Here it's at the end, river. After time, well there's a T, so that looks good. After time, regular outlay needed for river. So what we're looking for here is a four letter word that means a regular outlay. Now sometimes the setters are really nasty and they will try and deliberately mislead you in the wordplay or the definition and make you think of the wrong, you know, the wrong thing, the wrong part of speech, but, but they must always be accurate. So whatever is written down must, once you reflect upon it, be fair. Uh, so regular outlay here, what we're looking for is an expense, as an outlay as in an expense. So have a think about whether you can think of any four letter words that mean a, a, a sort of regular expense that you might come across in day to day life. Try and put it in after this T and see if it gives you the name of a river. Pause if you need to. The answer is Trent. The Trent as in the river Trent and rent as in the regular outlay. I'm going to make no excuses by the way for, for just to going back to the very basics on this video, that's the idea of it. Let's have a look at this one. Seven letters beginning with P. Senior pupil, perfect after slight switch. Okay, so here the definition is senior pupil. Again, it's either at the beginning or the end in almost every, every, uh, every cryptic crossword. So here it's senior pupil. And then you've got perfect after slight switch as the wordplay. Now, here, what, what the setter is doing is saying, make a slight switch, make a small change to the letters that he's given you. He's given you the letters perfect. Make a small change to those letters, and you should be able to come up with a word that means a senior pupil. I'm sure you've all got it already. But the answer is prefect. Always use the letters as well. Always try and, you know, unless you're, you're trying to get faster or something by cold solving, use the letters that you get from the crossword to solve more of it. So here, vegetable we had planted in southeast. So here we're looking for the name of a vegetable. You may already have some ideas as to what might fit there. How does the rest of it work? Well, we had planted in southeast. So here uh, there is a very common abbreviation, an obvious abbreviation for southeast, and it's saying that we need to put some words that mean we had. We need to plant those in the middle of this abbreviation for southeast. Well, obviously, one of the most common ways of writing we had would be as weed with a, an apostrophe. And again, fairly straightforward. We just put that in the middle of the southeast. We get a word for a vegetable. Which we go now. Let's go and try and cold solve one down. Loud noise from river paddle. Okay. So this this again. Uh, I'm telling you what. You need to come up with a four-letter word that means a loud noise. The way the wordplay works here, and the from is telling you that you, you know you, you need to use the wordplay that's going to come after the word from uh, to construct the word that means the loud noise. Now, river in crossword clues 
has a multitude of meanings. We sort of, we've seen it already being the definition. Where it's part of the wordplay, the most common thing it is, is, a, is the abbreviation R. So most commonly, it is the, you know, we can write that as being the start of our word. There are, however, a few uh, other things to look out for if you see the word river and you suspect it's part of wordplay. A very common river that's used in crosswords is the Po, because it's so it's a very short river, obviously, and the setters like to use it. The river Po comes up. Uh, sometimes the X comes up. Uh, what else? The Tay, T-A-Y, see that quite often. But basically any short river, you need to try and build a familiarity with them. A foul, F-A-L, um, because they're all very helpful to the setter. But the most common is the R. So, so let's now think, now we need a three-letter word for a paddle that's going to appear next. And the whole thing will mean a loud noise. Pause if you need to. But the answer is raw. Again, fairly simple. R plus or gives roar, which is a loud noise. Let's go back to one across and see if we can make any headway with it. Referring to conservative and green, return to earlier position. Uh, okay, this is a very mean clue, I think. Um, this means return to earlier position nine letter word beginning to R, um, beginning with R, and it makes use of a few a few things that are slightly more difficult. So here you need to come up with a common two letter abbreviation or that, that means referring to. You might see this on a memo at work or on a subject line of an email. It begins with R, not too difficult. Then you've got the word conservative. Now Conservative tends to mean one of two things, when you, one of three things when you see it in, a, in wordplay. Sometimes it's just the letter C. Sometimes it's the abbreviation CON, conservative. And occasionally it's the word Tory, because obviously a lot of words end in Tory, so that's again useful for the setter. So you need to use one of those in the wordplay here. And finally you've got the word green. So we need to, we need this abbreviation, I'll tell you the abbreviation, it's RE, followed by one of those things that means conservative. And then you need a word that means green. Now I'm not going to tell you what that is, you have to try and come up with it. But the whole thing means a return to an earlier position, or return to an earlier position. So pause have a think about it, and I'll tell you the answer, I think, is reconvert, with vert being a word for green, so not, not a very easy word there. Right, let's go on. Tray, cold, arrives, that is right. Um, okay, this is mean as well. <laughs> um, this means, this is a seven letter word for a tray. Cold, well, here one of the, it's a very common abbreviation again because you see it on taps. Um, so if you see hot, it's normally H. If you see cold, it's normally C. So there you go, you can see the C in the grid already. You then got arrives, that is right. Well, there is an abbreviation for arrives. You might see it at an airport. Um, uh, just as DEP might be departs or departures, arrives is sometimes A double R. And then that is right. Well, that is has a common abbreviation um, that we use all the time, but we might not think of it as a uh, as a as an abbreviation, I suppose. Um, but if we say something's IE, that is idest. And then right R is in right and left. So the whole thing is broken down into bits in the wordplay sense. And it's not too difficult, I think, once somebody shows you how to do it, but I can totally appreciate how, if you come at this cold, you think, oh my God, I could never learn to do this because there's so many 
you know, so, so much of this crossword ease that you have to get used to. But um, it is doable. You will improve with practice. And I believe everybody can solve these times crosswords. You might not be able to solve them in five minutes, even with practice, but you could definitely solve them. So it's it's something that I think everybody should, um, everyone who's interested, could aspire and should aspire to do because it's achievable. Here we've got a different type of clue. So initially noted this high position in series. And you can see the way I read that. I didn't read it initially noted this high position in series, which would be a much more natural way to read the sentence. I read it um, because I'm used to reading cryptic clues. So initially noted this high. When I read that, I'm thinking I need to look at the initial letters of the words that come after the word initially. And I can see that it's a three letter word. That's why I'm focusing on the noted this high. And then position in series is the definition here. And if you just take those initial letters, you get NTH, which is a very strange word, but the nth position of something in a series is, I suppose, relatively common to mathematicians as a, as a, as a valid word and phrase. Now here's, here's another type of clue. Now this type of clue, four down, you tend to have one of these in every single times crossword, whether it's a cryptic, uh, the full cryptic or the quick cryptic. There'll only be one, but they're, they're always there, and they will always give you one answer without you having to do much work at all. And that's because the actual answer is hidden there in the clue. And the compiler has to tell you it's hidden in the clue. So here he uses the word in to do that. He's saying in the two words, Brunei theirs, you will find a consecutive series of letters that are the answer. Uh, and the answer is an offer of choice, as in uh, this is what the word means, offers a choice. And you can see it there, obviously, either. So the last two letters of Brunei, and the first four letters of theirs, we get the word either, which is the answer. Let's just fill this in. Hopefully we can get this one. This is a golf reference. Um, so publicizes furious golfer's poor stroke. So definition here is a golfer's poor stroke. We need a four letter word here that means publicizes, followed by a three letter word that means furious. And we put those together and we'll get that the answer. So have a think about it. It's fairly obvious from the letters we have in the grid. Publicizes airs. If you're furious, you're hot, as in hot under the collar. And then air shot is definitely something you don't want to aspire to in golf. Let's have a look at five down. Islanders sat up meeting obsession new. OK. So here we're looking for the name of an islander. And sat up. Remember, this is a down clue. So what the set setter is saying is that if you turn upwards the letters of sat, you would get TAS, which is the start of the answer. So you may already have a very good idea about what the name of this islander is. Sat up, meeting obsession. OK, so we need to come up with a word that means obsession that we're going to put next because the sat up is going to meet with the word obsession or the, the synonym for obsession and that's all going to be followed and it's then you've got this word new well new can mean two things normally when it applies in wordplay sometimes it can be an, an indication you need to make an anagram of, um, of a word but obviously obsession is too long more commonly it's just an abbreviation new, new can be abbreviated to n um, so have a look at this. I'm sure you've all got it again. Tasmanian is the answer. Mania for an obsession. Now I'm going to do I'm going to do two more because I don't want the video to be too long. I'm going to do 12 down, um, and I might do this one as well because it'll give you the first letter of 11 across. But I really encourage you to 
spend some time and try and use the letters that these these two answers are going to give you to see if you can get um, one or two more answers based on the principles that we've been discussing. So let's have a look at this one. New leads on little battle, that's gossip. Okay, so the answer here is a word for gossip and what the wordplay here is telling us, so it's saying new leads on little battle, we need to change the first letters of the words little and battle and if we can do that in the right way we'll come up with something that means gossip. I'm sure you've all got it again but tittle, oh my god, I'm turning on my typing here, sorry about that, tittle, tattle, looks good, it's going to give you a T for 11 down, let's look at 12 down to get the extra letters here, so machine permit not dear oddly, okay, um, The annoying thing will be that I can't can't solve this. So let me just uh, let me just get one of the others across and go from there. Okay. Right. Okay. So let's go back to this one. So machine permit not dear oddly. Well, I can tell you this is a seven-letter word for a machine. And let's look at the rest of it. Permit, not dear oddly. Now, the word oddly, again, when you see it in wordplay, most normally will be hinting you need to anagram some letters. Now here, you can see we're looking for a seven letter answer. So you might have thought, oh, I could anagram the letters of not and dear. They add to seven and maybe I'd get an answer. Well, that would only be valid if the definition was machine permit. And I don't know about you, but I can't think of any words that would be that would mean machine permit. You, the, the setter is not allowed to include just random words in the clue that don't serve a purpose. Um, so always remember that every word in the clue should serve a purpose. It cannot be there just by accident to do nothing. So we need to think of a different way of reading oddly here. And sometimes you see oddly, sometimes you see evenly, sometimes you see regularly. But what when you see those words, you need to think about taking the odd or the even or the alternate letters of a phrase in order to construct the answer. So here, perhaps you can see that if we take just the odd letters from the phrase permit not dear, we would get a P, an R, an I, an N, a T, an E, and an R, which of course spell printer, which is the answer. So I'm going to I'm not going to give you the answers to the rest, but I'm just going to run through them more quickly and tell you what to look for. So 12 across, group of words. Group of words is the definition. Become strained we hear uh, is the word play. And here you're looking for a homophone. You're looking for a word that when you say it, uh, a word that means strained, that when you say it, it will sound like a word that means a group of words that fits within this gap. So have a think about that one. 13 across is the name of colour. That's the definition. The, the word play, love it to change. Well, this is telling you you need to change, to anagram, the letters love and it. So if you change those letters, if you anagram them, you should be able to come up with a word that means a colour. 16. A solo sitting, it's organised, revealing one opposing partnership. Okay, so again, this is another anagram. It means one opposing partnership, and it's an anagram of a solo sit in it. So have a think about that. When you get these massive long anagrams like this, 
um, it's often good to try and work out what the ending might be. So here you've got one opposing partnership. So it, I think it's reasonable to try and think of, you know, this is probably somebody IST at the end, you know, monopolist, you know, something like that, federalist. Um, so try and think of a word that ends IST there that means one opposing partnership. Um, right, let's look at this one. Work stoppage fails to start. Transport the child produced. Okay. So this is the name of transport for child for a child. It's sort of a child's toy, I guess. Um, and then we need to think of a six-letter word for a work stoppage. And we need to remove the first letter. So fails to start is saying remove the first letter from a word that means work stoppage. And you should be able to produce a word that's a, for, for a child's transport. 22 across somewhat grimy section of wheel. Well, you'll remember earlier on we talked about hidden clues in four down. Well, here you have another example of that. I'm not going to tell you any more because I give it away. Right, last word after cricket match, requirement finally for proof. Okay, this, this is a nine letter word that means proof. The, the word play here, we've got last word after cricket match. Okay, well, you need to come up with a four letter word for a cricket match. You need to follow it with a four letter word for the last word. You might want to think of the last word in a, a biblical sense or a prayer sense there. And then requirement finally. Well, again, this is saying take the final letter of the word requirement. And then you've got the nine letters you need. And you should be able to create a word that means proof if you do all that. OK, let's look at 14 down. Country hotel so exotic. Here you're looking for a seven letter name of a country. And hotel so exotic. The word exotic there is telling you to anagram the letters of hotel so. So try and do that to come up with the name of a country at 14 down. <laughs> Hate Latin, five letters, is um, that's a slightly dubious clue in my opinion. I, I think it's, uh, it's a word that means hate in Latin. Um, let's come back to that and let me just prove that by... Yeah, yes, it is. I mean... Um, yeah, I don't like that clue at all. You don't see, you wouldn't see that very, very, very often in the Times. Fifteen down. Football Association secures new site for celebration. Okay, this is a six-letter word that means celebration. You need to think of a very obvious abbreviation for football association, and you need to put that around because it secures this abbreviation for football. Association secures, i.e., it contains an anagram of the word site. So, new here is being used to indicate an, an anagram. We talked about new being a possible N in one of the earlier clues. Here it's telling you to anagram the letters of the word site. And you should be able to come up with a word that means a celebration. Uh, so, where are we up to? Let's look at 20 across. Um, Pay collecting article in U.S. city. Uh, I haven't quite got that one left. Let's look at this one. Rescue vessel starts to apparently recover kayak. This is a word that means uh, it's the name of a rescue vessel. Vessel, and it's. I'm going to tell you this clue works very similarly to one that we looked at earlier at three down. So try and use the principles in three down to solve 21 down. Look at this one. Put together using every cardinal point. Okay, so here you need to come up with a word that means put together. So be careful of the tense there because it could be 
uh, could be present or past tense. Um, and using every cardinal point. So it's telling you to use every abbreviation for north, south, east and west. It's a four letter clue, so you need to lose each of those abbreviations just once. You should be able to come up with a word that means put together. Uh, right. Okay, let's go back to this one. Pay collecting article uh, in U.S. city. Here you're looking for, a, it's the name of a U.S. city. Uh, you're looking for a six letter word, which means pay. And that six letter word is going to collect, i.e. it's going to contain within it an article. Now, when you see article in a crossword clue and it's in the word play, it's normally referring to a, an, the, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's referring to the indefinite and definite articles of speech. So most normally it would be a, an, or the. Um, so have a think about putting, well obviously it's a in that example, I've told you it's a six letter word means pay. So you need to put a six letter word around an a and you should be able to come up with a US city. So we, I think we're almost there now. We, we just need to talk about this one. Um, okay. So find recording sad. Uh, okay. So here you've got a five and four. It means find. The whole thing means find. You need a five letter word for a recording and then a four letter word that means sad. And the whole thing will mean find. And if you manage to do all of that, you'll have solved quick cryptic crossword from the times and I wish you luck let us know how you get on uh, I hope this was helpful um, it's 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 meant for beginners um, so those of you that have been following us from the start I'm sure that much of what I've said you you knew already um, but for those of you who are new to us um, we'll do these videos from time to time where we go back to the absolute absolute basics um, so I have for those of you who are starting on your cryptic crossword journey, I hope this was helpful. We'll see you again next time on Cracking the Cryptic.